We're Ellie and Luke. Three years ago, we bought an abandoned homestead in North Idaho with the simple goal of transforming it into a self-sufficient getaway. After two years of preparing the land, we're finally ready to start our biggest project yet, our off-grid tiny home. Follow along as we experience the trials and tribulations of building completely off the grid and by ourselves. The North Idaho nomads are finally settling down and we can't wait to share this adventure with you. We're making progress on the roof for our off-grid tiny home. In the last few episodes, Luke installed the OSB on the roof and has started putting down the waterproofing layer. In today's episode, he's finishing up the waterproofing tape and preparing the roof for the fascia. So I'm not quite sure what happened, but I either lost the footage of Luke starting in on work this day or it was never filmed. Either way, not a big deal. Happy December, everybody. I can't believe we're at the end of the year already. Now, if you live in the northern half of the U.S., you might be thinking that this looks awfully green for December 14th. However, this footage was shot honestly about a month ago now. We were really busy in mid-October to November, and so we weren't able to get as many videos edited and posted onto YouTube as we had hoped. So we're kind of playing catch up a little bit. So sorry about that. But this way we're able to show you the entire build and you can see literally, literally every single step of how this project is going for us. So this stage of the build took Luke about four days worth of work to get the OSB up onto the roof and also the ice and rain guard put on, which you will see later in the video. Now, for a lot of people, you know, this might just be a one day project, but for us, since Luke was working by himself, um, it took, you know, the time it took and we're totally okay with that. This build isn't as fast as some other, you know, tiny home builds might be, but you know what? We've made our peace with that. We're just happy that we can get down there when we can to work on it. And I'm very grateful that Luke was able to take the time he did to get the OSB and the ice and rain guard on. I also just want to make a quick mention because I have read some comments. Luke is using the spacers on each OSB sheet as he puts it up. The clips just don't always show him. Sometimes I edit it out because it's kind of a boring step, but they are being used. So I just wanted to clarify that with some comments. They were asking if we were using the spacers and the answer is yes, Luke is. God, these little mother Ah, that. that is that. She's covered. Trim the edges a little bit. See how far we get from here, but I'm happy with this for now. All right, back after it. To town for the week. Missed a lot of the beautiful weather, which means we are way behind. So I'm trying to prep for roofing and work on the fascia today. I don't know if this is right, but I got this, I think it's like a hardy board. I don't know, I'm gonna paint it, give that a shot. I actually lost half of this one on the way down. Yeah, here we go, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get these painted up. And yeah, use them for my fascia. I gotta get them up there, they're pretty floppy. So it's gonna be a challenge, but I think we can get it. Uh, I just kinda trimmed the edges of that OSB off the side with the router. All the sink bugs are a problem. They're definitely taking over. They have laid their claim on this property and they now own it. It is bad, I've never seen anything like it. It's a biblical plague of stink bugs that I'm battling down here. I mean, just underneath the tarp 
is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stink bugs. So every flap you fold up, it's just f***ing alive. It's so gross. But I'm hoping once I get the roof on, it'll have give them less places to hide and fornicate, do whatever it is stink bugs do. And this weather is too perfect to hold out. So I gotta take advantage while we can, try to get, hopefully get this roof on before winter. So that is the plan. Nice. I think it's gonna take two coats though. Got that set up. Oh. Oh, this sucks. Saw that coming.
So let's get into it. We talk about portable power stations on this channel a lot, but we have a good reason for it. We don't have conventional power out here on our homestead. And honestly, we probably never will. We are probably always going to be quote unquote off the grid. At some point, we'll probably get a solar powered system in place. But until then, we are gonna rely on portable power stations. So when EBL reached out and asked if we were interested in trying their new battery out and giving a review, what do you think we said? <laughs> so by far, one of the coolest function, one of the coolest features of this EBL H2400 is the Life PO4 batteries, also known as lithium iron phosphate, right? EBL calls them the Life PO4 batteries. What sets them apart is their longevity. So most conventional power stations on the market, you're gonna get about a thousand charges before it's dead. These new batteries, um, they have a 10 year life expectancy and they should be able to be recharged for over 3000 cycles. So that means with power stations like these, your investment goes a lot longer um, and the battery can be used for a lot longer. I mean, 10 years, that's a really long time. So this particular model has 11 ports. Uh, not sure if you would be charging 11 things at the same time, but hey, it's an option. And then in addition, EBL also offers 200 watt solar panels. So no portable power station is perfect. This does have a couple of cons, but they're pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. One, this sucker is so heavy. It's 55 pounds which might not seem a lot, but when you're constantly taking it in and out of a vehicle, moving it in and out of a cabin, it just gets old after a while. This model in particular also does make a really weird rattling noise when we're using it. So we're not sure if that's a defect or if, you know, it got damaged in transit when it was sent to us. Not 100% sure. It doesn't really seem to affect the quality of the unit, but the rattling is kind of concerning. Not really sure. But yeah, that's our quick, that's just our thoughts on this power station. This is probably one of our favorite ones we've reviewed so far. It's just got really good features. Um, but if you're interested in one of these for yourself, we will put the link in the description. All right, got three layers on the ice shield. I was just gonna do the bottom, but the roll goes pretty far. So I might just do the whole thing. Got a pretty good system now. First two are a little bit rough, but it's flowing pretty well. I might, I don't think I have enough for a full, another full length layer, but I'll try, see what happens. I'm pretty much done for today. And I got the fascia painted. Well, parts of it. I lost a chunk on the way down. So I'll grab more fascia tomorrow, get it painted. Grab another roll of ice and water shield. Finish that off. Got the fascia up. I'm gonna skedaddle. All right, welcome back. Another day of ice and water shield installation, battling stink bugs. Get out of here, son of Anyways, I got another roll. See how far, I, oh God, I hope it gets the rest of this roof done, because if not, I'm gonna be this close and have to go buy a whole nother roll for probably one more layer. So I'm gonna see if I can stretch this stuff really far today. Uh, before we get started, I would like to thank, uh, you know, one of the smaller YouTube channels, Ambition Strikes and Riley for addressing a very sensitive topic that is on the hearts and minds of everybody today. And that is the screw versus nail debate. Finally, somebody addressed it. I have been trying, I've been screaming from the rooftops. Nobody will listen to me. But Riley stepped up, brave, all the pushback, and told the world what they needed to hear. Screws are okay, people. They're okay. Thank you, Riley, for taking that on and supporting me in my mission to educate the world about structural screws. True hero. Anyways, let's get to it. I'm gonna lug that heavy ass roll up here again. Hopefully it doesn't slide off the roof today. And I'll get to it. God, I hope this is enough. I don't think it is, though.
Oh, it's hot up here. Whew. So I wanted to explain a little bit about Luke's process. So you'll notice that we covered the entire roof in the ice and rain guard. That's the black tape, for lack of a better word, that Luke's putting down. And normally you don't have to cover the entire roof. Normally you only put this on maybe the bottom three, four feet of a roof. However, you have to buy it by the roll and a whole roll almost covered about half the roof. So Luke just figured, well, I might as well just buy another roll and cover up the entire roof. It just adds added protection from moisture. And also we at this point realized we're probably not going to get the metal roof material on this year. Anything we can do to help protect our roof, we're going to do it especially since we're probably going to have a tarp over the roof the whole winter. So this was just added protection and putting up the rain guard didn't take that long. So Luke just decided to cover the whole roof in it. So that's realistically all we're going to get done on the roof in 2023. We're really excited for 2024 and in the spring we'll most likely be able to get the metal roofing material on but until then, this is probably going to be it. So we feel confident that the roof is going to be protected all winter. We don't show it in this video, but we will cover it with another tarp, maybe two tarps, just to be on the safe side. December is also shaping up to be a pretty busy month for us. I'm hoping that we'll be able to finish up some of these videos, you know, from a couple months ago and maybe mix in a couple videos we've shot more recently. And then by January, 2024, we'll be back to shooting and uploading weekly videos that actually happened that week. So that's really exciting. And I think we're gonna keep doing these voiceovers. We had good feedback on the last video and I enjoy doing these. So maybe I'll convince Luke one of these days. So put it in the comments if you'd like to see Luke do a voiceover on one of these videos and maybe we'll get him to record something. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.